Welcome to Lecture 6. In this lecture, we will step away from thermodynamics briefly to discuss some statistical mechanical concepts. Thermodynamic quantities can be derived from statistical mechanics, and we will demonstrate this point by deriving the internal energy. This lecture will be broken down into three parts. First, we will define macrostates and microstates. Second, we will quantify what is a partition function and present the partition functions for translational, rotational, and vibrational types of motion. Finally, we will derive the internal energy of a system based on the partition functions that define it and apply it to a monatomic gas. In thermodynamics, a macrostate is described by properties such as pressure, temperature, volume, internal energy, and enthalpy, and a microstate is described by quantifying the variables associated with the states of the individual atoms or molecules in a system. We'll go over a couple of examples in order to illustrate these two points. For now, think of a macrostate as a group of similar microstates. We are generally not interested in individual microstates since it's the macrostate of a system that we measure as a property of the system. One major assumption in statistical mechanics is the principle of equal a priori probability, which states that all microstates are equally probable. This means that the number of different microstates that is a member of the same macrostate determines the probability of the macrostate occurring. These points can be easily seen with an intuitive example, throwing two dice. The image shows all possible face value combinations of two dice arranged according to their total. A microstate in this case is the face value of the two dice. So a microstate would be when one dice reads one and the other also reads one. Since we can distinguish the two dice then a face value of 5 and 2 is different from 2 and 5 and are counted as two different microstates. The macrostate in this case is the total from both dice. Since each microstate is equally likely, then the number of microstates in a macrostate determines how likely a given macrostate is. As can be seen in the image, 7 is the most probable macrostate since there are six combinations of microstates that give 7. 2 and 12 are the least likely macrostates since there is only one microstate for each. There are a total of 36 microstates and 11 macrostates for this system. An important observation is that as the number of total microstates increases, the number of probable or observable macrostates decreases. In the dice example, increasing the number of microstates means throwing more dice. If we were to throw more dice, say 10 or 100, the broad distribution seen with the two dice becomes much thinner. The most likely macrostate becomes very probable relative to all others. This phenomenon is what allows us to average over moles of particles and get predictable, observable quantities since they tend to be the only probable ones. Consider a second example. Suppose we have three identical non-interacting molecules distributed over energy levels where the total energy of the system is equal to three. How many different ways can we distribute the molecules? Assume that the molecules can be distinguished from one another by their locations. The illustration on the left shows that there are in general three ways to distribute the molecules in the energy levels. These are the macrostates. For each macrostate, there are different number of microstates. For macrostate one, there is only one way to put all three molecules into energy level one. For macrostate 2, there are six ways to arrange the three molecules on their own in energy levels 0, 1, and 2. Finally, there are three ways to distribute the three molecules where one is in energy level 3 and the other two are in energy level 0. Since there are 10 ways to arrange the molecules so that the total energy is 3, then that means the most probable macrostate is number 2. The general formula for calculating the number of microstates in a distribution W is equal to n factorial divided by the product of n i factorial. And this is where n is the total number of particles, n i is the number of particles in the nth energy level. The exclamation mark is called factorial, where n factorial, or anything factorial, is given by n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down until it's times 1. As a side note, 0 factorial is also equal to 1. The large pi symbol means the product of all that follows. In this case, it is referring to the product of all n i factorial. Written in a different way, it would be written as n1 factorial times n2 factorial, all the way to n i minus 1 factorial, n i factorial. Let's use this now in practice to determine the number of microstates in a distribution using the exact same problem that we had already analyzed with our three-particle system, 
where what we're trying to do is just have three identical non-interacting molecules distributed over energy levels where the total energy is equal to three. And so what we're trying to do is, again, just determine how many microstates exist in each of the three macrostates. And so the way that we calculate this, as was shown on the previous slide, was that we would then take n factorial divided by the product over i of ni factorial. And so in this case, since we've got three particles in our system, so that means on top we're going to have three factorial. And on the bottom, well, this pi, this capital pi sign just means the product of what follows. And i basically is going to be equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that means on the bottom what we're going to have is the number of particles in the zeroth energy level factorial times the number in the first energy level factorial times the number in the second energy level factorial times the number in the third energy level factorial. And so we're going to use this general expression then based on the original definition to determine how many microstates exist in each of the three macrostates that we examined previously. Let's now apply this to each of the macrostates. So for macrostate number one, we have, starting with the general definition, we have n factorial divided by the product over i of ni factorial. For the this system and like for the other three, we've got three factorial on top. And on the bottom, we're basically again taking the product of the number of particles sitting in each of the energy levels. So n0, there are zero particles in it. n1, there are three. n2, there is zero. And n3, there is zero. So that means I'm going to write zero factorial, three factorial, zero factorial, zero factorial. Now we know that each of these zero factorials, they're just equal to one. And so what we're left with is 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial, which means that there is only one microstate in macrostate 1, which is an answer that we already showed to ourselves and we can see in the image. Moving on to macrostate number 2, we again, we can start with the general definition, n factorial over the product over i of n i factorial. Well, in this case, we still have 3 factorial on top. The number of molecules haven't changed. On the bottom, well, we have one particle in n0, one particle in n1, one particle in n2, and zero particles in n3. So that means we have one factorial times one factorial times one factorial times zero factorial. And that this denominator is one times one times one times one. So it's just one. That means we're left with 3 factorial on top, 3 times 2 times 1 over 1, which means that we have a total of 6 microstates in macrostate 2. Let's now determine the number of microstates in macrostate number 3. Here again, n factorial divided by the product over i of n i factorial. What that gives me again, 3 factorial on top. Well, here we have 2 in n 0, 0 in n 1, 0 in n 2, and 1 in n 3. So we have 2 factorial times 0 factorial times 0 factorial times 1 factorial. And so in this case, again, the zeros and the 1 factorials, they're just equal to 1. And so what we're left with is 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1. And so in the end, what we have is 3 mi microstates in macrostate number 3. Now one point I'd like to stress, again, is this fact that each microstate is equally probable of occurring. And so that means that we have, over the sum of all of these different microstates, we have 10 in total. And so if each of these then are equally likely, then the one or the macrostate that has the most number of microstates is going to be the one that we're going to observe the most. It's the one that's most likely. And so that means then that in this case, given the specific system, macrostate number two is going to be the one that we're going to see the most or that we're going to measure the most because it has six microstates. Or in other words, it has the most microstates out of all three. And then in this case, micro or macrostate number one is the one we will least see since there's only one microstate that makes up this one state. What this says to us also is that if we ended up in macrostate number one, if we somehow found ourselves in that state, we would tend to then move towards macrostate number two, 
since it is more likely that we would find it, or there's six possibilities out of ten, as opposed to one possibility out of ten, that is, if the system matures or changes into something else, that it would then tend to change into macrostate number two. Similarly, if we found ourselves in macrostate number three, again, we would tend to move towards macrostate number two when the system changes, simply because it is just more likely that we would end up in macrostate number two because there's just more possibilities for macrostate number two to occur.